The most common injuries you will encounter are extremity injuries. But before treating these types of injuries, you should assess the patient for other, more life-threatening conditions. Use the airway, breathing and circulation method to detect potentially life-threatening injuries. When assessing extremity injuries, always check and document the patient's circulation, sensation and motor function in both the injured and uninjured extremities. To check the circulation, assess the presence of a palpable pulse in the extremity as demonstrated here. You should also note the capillary refill time by pressing on the nail bed. The colour should return to the nail bed briskly, in two seconds or less. Sensation in the extremities can be assessed by asking the patient, Do you feel this? or What foot am I touching? Finally, the range of motion or movement should be assessed. For the upper extremities, have the patient squeeze two of your fingers and for lower extremities, have the patient push and pull against the resistance of your hands. Make a note of any deficiencies in circulation, sensation or movement. There are many different splinting techniques and splints available. We will discuss the most common methods now. Wrist or forearm injuries can be splintered using a rigid or soft splint. While preparing the splint, gently support the patient's injury while assessing their circulation, sensation and movement. A roll of bandages should be placed in the patient's hand to help relax the muscles and stimulate the normal position. All fractures should be splintered to include one joint above and one joint below the injury. In the case of a forearm injury, the patient's elbow, forearm and wrist, including the hand, should be immobilized. Now we will show a rigid splint. After securing the rigid splint, apply a sling and a swath to ensure immobilization of the arm. You can splint a humerus injury using the sling and swath method. A simple triangle bandage or a cravat can be used to construct the sling and swath. First, support and stabilize the patient's injured extremity. Next, gently position a cravat over the top of the patient's chest and position the patient's injured arm across the chest. One point of the cravat should extend behind the elbow. Take the bottom of the cravat and bring this end up over the patient's arm. Draw up on the ends of the sling and tie the two ends of the sling together. If possible, the patient's wrist should be positioned slightly above their heart. Place a pad underneath the knot for comfort. Form a pocket around the patient's elbow using a pin or a knot. A swath can be formed with a second cravat. The swath is tied around the chest and the injured arm and over the sling. Avoid placing the swath directly on the injury. Reassess the patient's circulation, sensation and motor function. For lower extremity injuries, the basic principles of stabilization are the same. Directly apply manual stabilization and assess the circulation, sensation and movement before and after applying a splint. Measure the splint. It should extend several inches beyond the joints, above and below the injury. Apply the splint and immobilize the joints both above and below the injury. Remember to stabilize the entire injured extremity. For lower extremity injuries, the patient's uninjured leg can serve as a natural splint if other materials are unavailable. Simply tie the legs together using cravats or bandages. This method is also effective with injured fingers. Femur and pelvic fractures require specialized splinting methods. We will demonstrate these processes in a separate video clip. Although commercially manufactured splints are available, you can use common items like cardboard, magazines, newspapers or even tree branches to create a splint. Remember to stabilize the joints above and below the injury. The splinting methods are the same whether you decide to use a commercial 
or improvised splint.